Next, we're going to gradually work our way from the front to the rear of the bus. A couple things that there are quite a few things that I will point out, talk about as we as we work our way to the back. First thing we see up here is a fire extinguisher. Uh, one of two. The second one is in the uh, in an outside and under compartment, which we'll see when we uh, when we do the outside uh, segment. Other thing you're going to see as I look around here up front is an emergency exit pull handle and push door. This handle actually disengages the drive to the uh, bus door. Normal operation, of course, is from the switch up here. And if we have a need, uh, as the label implies there, in an emergency exit situation, you find that if you pull the handle as the instruction tells you, that you can now open and close the door. I found that the easiest way to get it to re-engage again is to have it all the way open. And sometimes you have to actually operate the switch in the open direction. Hear the motor run there, and then you might you should get to a point where the handle will close to re engage the motor. I just had to move it slightly there with my hand uh, so that the handle you don't want to force the handle because you're actually uh, engaging and disengaging the drive. Don't force the handle because you could damage the door opening mechanism. Now we'll go ahead and uh, Another thing I'm going to uh, demonstrate here is in the final opening movement of the door, uh, if we have the uh, key on, about the last, last quarter inch there of opening the door, we get our uh, uh, entranceway overhead light to come on and also our step well light to come on. Also, while I have the key on, and if I have the, either the uh, parking lights on or the headlights on, we have a uh, LED uh, strip lighting uh, for uh, front to back floor area. Also, if you forget to, as a driver operator, forget to turn the lights off, the uh, parking lights or the headlights, you're going to hear that beep as a reminder when you turn the key off. Continue working our way to the back. The first thing we're going to see uh, is center lights while we're up here in the, uh, in the front of the vehicle. And with the key on, we have one, one of our dash switches is uh, labeled lights. It's a three position switch. If we press the bottom part of the switch, we have uh, center lights at low intensity and top part of the switch, center lights high intensity. Opportunity here next to take a look at one of the two roof vents. And first of all, you have to have the, remember talking about the breakers earlier, uh, one of our 12 volt breakers is labeled roof vents. It's got to be on. To use the vent, you have to rotate the black knob, and this will open the hatch. And when the hatch gets up several inches, the vent motor will come on. You have a direction control. Word of caution on the direction control, it's, it's labeled there. You can either have the air coming in or the air going out. The word of caution is not to change the direction switch here with the fan operating because, for example, right now it's going in and we're going to, if I were to change it to out, the fan drive motor has to immediately reverse direction and you could blow this fuse. So what you want to do is turn the fan off or at least not have it on high speed and then go ahead and change your direction switch and repower the fan. Uh, at freeway speeds, uh, you're going to want to have the hatch closed because of the buffeting up there. You're going to get a lot of uh, uh, buffeting to that uh, hatch cover. And also uh, common sense if it's starting to rain 
Hopefully there's somebody on board here that can get the vent, the vent covers closed. Next item we're going to see as we walk to the back is our uh, battery operated uh, smoke detector. We're going to see uh, overhead storage, lockable overhead storage, one of the many keys on the key ring spelled out in a documentation as to what key fits what. All of the overhead storage, I believe they're a C390A key, all of them are key to light for all of the overhead storage. We're also going to notice a locking pin to hold our curtains in the retracted position, locking pin with a safety cable on it uh, to be removed uh, to uh, deploy the curtains or to hold the curtains out of the way when you're uh, in transit. Next thing we're going to talk about is the uh, uh, receptacles. Uh, when I went over in the 120, 240 volt panel there, uh, and I can give you a quick review of that on the uh, definition or location of those receptacles. We had the utility recept receptacles, workstation receptacles, and uh, litter receptacles. So to identify those, we're up front here. These uh, three duplex vertical receptacles are uh, for the forward litter location or litter station and the easiest way to define the location or the litter stations is to look at the ceiling curtain tracks so that is one litter station and litter receptacles for that station another example over here is passenger side litter station by looking at the track and identifying the receptacles for that litter station, which is going to be this one and the two lower duplex receptacles for that litter station. We also have workstation receptacles, and we're going to find that the workstation receptacles are going to be right here, the lower, lower level belt line here on the passenger side of the vehicle for our removable and adjustable uh, workstation table. We're getting a look here now at one of two uh, air conditioning units. I may have briefly mentioned earlier that this forward driver side unit is uh, air conditioning only and the other unit in the back which looks identical is both air conditioning and heat under the control of the dash switches that we went over earlier in the video. Another item we've got a view at here right now would be uh, the uh, emergency uh, roof hatch or emergency exit, clearly labeled. And to use that hatch in an emergency, let's say that the, the vehicle has tipped on its side and you've got to get out of here in a hurry, uh, either maybe the uh, bus entrance door is blocked, rear door may be blocked, you need to get out in a hurry. So follow the label, it says to turn, then push knob to open talking about this knob that's currently in the latch position. Move it around till the arrow lines up with the to exit position and push. Another item we're going to see in our litter stations is the litter uh, station lighting. First switch is labeled top litter. It happens to be a three position switch off in the center position high and low for our litter lighting. And you're going to see those sim or that similar switch arrangement on the small bus at all three uh, litter locations. Another difference that you'll note uh, when you're comparing the small bus to the large bus is of course going to be the number of litter stations and of course the number of, uh, of uh, foldable seats. We're going to demonstrate now one of the seats and to raise the seat, first thing we want to do is push on the backrest handle, and lower the backrest. And you can't really see it when you're standing, but if you kneel down, you're going to see another red lever. Uh, something, depending on the adjustment, may be a little hard to push off, so to release the pressure uh, so that that latch will work more smoothly is to put your hand there and push down on the seat and release the lever and, and raise the seat. 
We also have exposed, uh, uh, and we were talking about the, the lighting switches for the litter area there. That we can, on the bottom litter position, middle litter position on the switches, we get a little better view now of, of those lights as they're mounted on the bottom of all the seats except this one over here. All the other seats have that lighting arrangement. So, when we're ready to uh, uh, travel, if you're going to be traveling with the seat uh, in its uh, raised position, you want to be sure to the other, another red handle, red labeled handle, so that going around a turn or driving that that seat is secured in its upright position. To get it to go back down to be used as a passenger seat, reverse those steps. Another red handle to release. And it will automatically latch as you raise the backrest. Another item as we work our way to the back, there is a complete set of uh, window uh, blackouts or window covers. You're going to see the snaps on these, uh, one of many of uh, the window covers and lining up with corresponding snaps to cover the window. Also you're going to see on the windows, uh, all of the windows, uh, exit labeling. Pull handles, push window to open. There is a, a caution that you're going to see in the operator's manual to not push the window out unless it's an emergency situation, not to push the window out further than 50 degrees. If you would continue to push that window out, it can detach from the top and drop to the ground and damage the window. So in an emergency, uh, that would not apply. But just to test it, don't push it out more than 50 degrees. Continue on our way to the back. We'll talk next about the uh, roof air conditioner. Another difference, uh, and I think I might have mentioned earlier, difference between the small bus and large bus. The small bus that we're in right now only has one roof air conditioner. A large bus, you're going to see two roof air conditioners. Right knob is for temperature control. Of course, red all the way red is heat. As I turn it around, all the way to blue is to maximum cool for the air conditioning mode. And looking at the mode control over here, right now it's in the off position. First position is going to be low heat, even though it's an air conditioner. It has a low heat position coming on there now. And when you're, it has an optional heat package built into that air conditioner, so when you're in a low heat position and you've given, given enough time to warm up, you'll actually get warm air coming out of that air conditioner if, if power is available on a 120, 240 volt panel to, uh, to operate it. After, after low heat, we've got low fan, high fan, low cool, and high cool back to off. Maintenance item on the uh, roof air conditioner are, are these filter pads. A lot of air fl flow through these foam, black foam filter pads. Driver operator responsibility to monitor wh when they're getting dirty. A quarter turn fastener here. Uh, drop the panels down. Remove the foam <coughs> pad. <coughs> wash it, dry it, and put it back up in place as needed. Continue working our way to the back. Second air conditioner unit. Another item we're going to see here, I mentioned the uh, smoke detector up front. What we have here now is, uh, I, as the label implies up here, carbon monoxide detector. So uh, periodically as a driver operator you want to make sure that those are uh, detectors are, are both functioning. Also, as we all the way to the back now, uh, as the label implies here, this is a our HEPA filter control, and uh, for attempting to maintain a little more healthy environment in, in the enclosed space here, the HEPA filter. Uh, if you turn it to the off, low, medium, and high position, if we had the uh, uh, 
uh, switch on up there uh, uh, to operate our and, and help clean the interior, recirculate and clean the interior air. Reference to the documentation as to the frequency on how often you need to uh, replace that filter. Swing out back doors. I'm going to open the uh, driver's side first. There are uh, mechanical latches that are obvious on the outside when you're outside there to uh, hold them in their open position. And then you can do the same on the driver's side. To close them, you need to close the just in the reverse order, driver's side first. And the passenger side. Uh, I think we talked earlier when we were going over the dash area, uh, we mentioned that there is a, uh, a warning and also a, a transmission interlock. If not only having the uh, rear doors open, the transmission will not, you're not able to put the transmission in gear. If the uh, wheelchair uh, door is open and also if the uh, bus power operated bus entrance door is open, interlock on the, uh, on the transmission. Also, I think I might have mentioned too that another interlock on the transmission is the fast idle. <coughs> if you're using the cruise control for fast idle, transmission interlock comes into play. And we'll